That's why we practice. Every day this week, we've gone live and we have been talking to you about some of the key skills you need in your surgical career. We've done microsurgery. We've shown you how to set up a microsurgical skills lab at home with nothing but a phone stand, some MedSync microsurgery instruments like this. Check out our shop. We sell them. And the chicken thigh. We show you how to prepare the chicken thigh so you can get to the nerve artery and vein. We've talked about deciding on reconstructive options for skin cancer defects and we've done some tendon repairs. Today we're talking about closing complex wounds. Sometimes suturing is just hard and sometimes it's just hard because of the patient, because of the wound, because of the environment you're suturing in or you're just not having a great day. So I'm going to take you through some techniques in the members only area on how to deal with that. But in this live session beforehand, I'm going to talk to you about suture classification. So first four things. Sutures can be classified into monofilament, braided, dissolvable, non-dissolvable. You can be monofilament and dissolvable, monofilament and non-dissolvable. You can be braided and dissolvable, braided and non-dissolvable. That's the first thing. Then we look at the number. So these sutures are the same. They're proline, proline 3030. The number refers to the strength required to break the stitch. And the bigger the number, like this, the less strength required to break it. The smaller the number, so when we head towards 2 -oh and 1, the more strength required to break it. So 1 requires more strength than 3 -oh. 8 -oh requires less strength than 3 -oh. This is a micro suture, this is a normal suture. Then we want to look at even smaller details, and these are important because suture selection can help you in different circumstances. So. Some additional details you can see on the packet. This is round bodied. This is taper point. Round bodied means that it's not got a cutting edge. Reverse cutting is when the cutting edge on the back. Cutting is on the inside. Typically you use reverse cutting for suturing skin. You can use cutting as well. Taper point can be used as well. Then you look at the needle length. The needle length is actually here. 17 millimeters. 25 millimeters. If you're doing tendon repairs, you might want to use the longer needle because it has to pass at least one centimeter. If you've only got one and a half centimeters, it's a lot harder to do that than if you've got two and a half centimeters. Then you've got the final thing to look at, which is how much of a circle is the needle. So if it's three, so if it's three quarters of a circle, for example, you get more curve. If it's half a circle, it's like this. You might want more curve if you're stitching inside intraorally and you've got a lot of deep suturing to do, maybe in the buccal sulcus by the teeth. You want to get good curvature because you haven't got good access. So then you don't have to do so much rotation because the needle is over curved and goes in and out easily. You might want less curve when you have to take longer bites like in a tendon repair. So we've classified sutures into monofilament, braided, monofilament, proline, braided, silk, monofilament, monocryl, monofilament, proline. We classify it again into dissolvable, non-dissolvable. Dissolvable, monocryl, non-dissolvable, proline, but both monofilament. We look at the size, well, the number, 3040. More strength is required to break this suture then this suture, more strength is required to break this suture than this suture. Then additional factors you can look at is the needle type. This is round bodied. This is taper point. For suturing skin, reverse cutting, cutting, taper point, dissolvable, non-dissolvable, the choice is yours. We're talking about suture selection to make your life easier for complex wounds. We're going live every day this week. We've covered microsurgery. If you look in the playlist, we have covered how to do microsurgery at home with a chicken thigh and just the phone stand. It's really easy. So if you want to be a surgeon, 
something you have to practice. You just need to get your MedSync microsurgery instruments from our shop tagged in the description of this video. Become a member, you can catch the members only session when we talk about, when we show you, don't even just talk about how to do the nerve repair on the chicken fly. We're doing a nerve repair live on YouTube and that's in the members only area. And as a member, you can also get access free to our live online events every single month. So we talked about suture classification and then we're gonna talk more a bit about suture classification for complex wounds. So this is a complex wound. Why? Because it's under tension. If you've got a wound under tension, you need to use sutures that are going to help you reduce the tension. I could use a monofilament suture to close the dead space, but actually I would select a braided suture such as Vicryl, and I would do that because the Vicryl braids will catch the dermis and grip it better. Whereas this is more likely to cut through, like I'm cutting through cheese, so cheese wire. So a simple thing like that, same, same, same suture size, but if I use 4 or 3 but just changing monofilament for braided will make my life easier. The environment you're suturing. If I'm suturing an a and &E, I haven't got an assistant, I've got a small surgical field, got maybe just a small trolley, I want to keep everything in my hands. This is what I would do. Scissors first, ring finger and thumb. Take my thumb out, palm my scissors so it's always in my hand. Then I'd be like this. And then every time I suture, it's always, everything is ready to go. So I'll show you an example of what I mean. And it's not about the suturing, it's about how I handle the instruments. So I go through and I palm my forcep. So I don't put it down because it might drop on the floor, I haven't got space, I won't find it easily. And then I put everything into one hand, my scissor comes out and I cut. That's how I overcome the circumstance of how to suture in a confined space where I haven't got lots of space. I haven't got much kit. Then, the next thing is, if I haven't got much in the way of suture selection, do big stitches. I get something non-dissolvable, and then, if it's in trauma, it's not about aesthetics, it's about getting the wound closed. There will always be a scar, I just need to reduce the gap between the skin edges to reduce the size of the scar and reduce time to healing. So if I haven't got access to lots of deep sutures like monocryl, vicryl, that just sometimes happens in you know acute emergency departments, you haven't got everything you get in theatres, get a non-dissolvable suture and do this. Teach you a few tricks. Go halfway, go across, pull everything in one hand, one, two, it's a gaping wound. I haven't taken off the tension with a deeper stitch. Finger under, make the cross and squeeze. I'm squeezing the tension, the wound is closed. I go under, take the short suture, pull it through, pull it through. So I'm just closing the wound in halves. I'm just placing essential sutures. I'm not trying to do anything fancy. I'm just closing the wound. It's a reasonable closure, it will look good, the scar will be the same. The only difference is I'm not taking out the dead space. That's a risk. In pre if I have a preference, I would take out the dead space. But for whatever reason, you haven't got the sutures you need. This is an option, and I'll tell you how you control the closure and reduce or scarring with something really, really straightforward. But I'm going to close the wound first and then I can explain it in better detail. And remember, after this session, I'm going to go live and I'm going to show you how to close a wound that's under tension. I'm going to show you how to close 
wounds like this with some sutures like the half buried mattress not the horizontal not the vertical the half buried i'm going to show you the deep dermal on the subcuticular i'm going to show you the locking mattress there are techniques that i use sutures that i use for complex wounds when things can be a bit more of a struggle i'm going to put one more suture in again everything's in my hands ready to go if you become a member of our YouTube program, you get this every week in the members only live. This week we're doing promo for it, so we're going live every single day in the public setting so that you can see what we get up to. I think we're the only surgical skills company based in the UK, but I think internationally that do live sessions for people to get better for their members. So join us. So. What would I then do once I've closed this wound? So I've closed the wound, I've done it in halves. I don't want many stitch marks, but I want the wound to stay well healed and not to stretch over time. So rather than in two weeks saying the patient have all the stitches removed, I would say to them have alternative sutures removed. So I've still got some control of the tension and then at three weeks have the rest removed. So you still will get stitch marks because I've used non-dissolvable sutures, but because I'm taking out half, I should get less significant ones, but still maintain some control of the wound. So that was a little insight into how I use suturing to deal with complex wounds. We've talked about classifying our sutures, monofilament, braided, dissolvable, non-dissolvable, the suture strength required to break it, the number, the 3 or the 4 or the 8 or the needle type, round bodied cutting, taper point, reverse cutting, and some skills you can use to close a complex wound, which is like a wound under tension, for example. In our members only live area, I'm gonna show you the deep dermal, the locking mattress, not the traditional mattress, the locking mattress, and I'm gonna show you the half buried suture, because here we've talked about when to use a braided versus a monofilament. We're gonna build upon that for our members. You've got access to the recordings, and as a member, you get access to our free live, well, they're not free, you get free access to our live events if you are a YouTube subscriber in our members only area there. We do this every week. We'll see you next week, Monday, 7.30 p.m. for a live session. See you there.